Hi, I'm Angie Cerrone here with Audrey Longstreth. We are digital marketing strategists with Source Brand Solutions. We want to make sure you can all hear us okay. If you can, can you put your comments in the chat that audio sounds good? That would help us out. So we put this webinar together because we meet with clients all the time, just like you, business owners, marketing leaders, and we go through your goals and your marketing strategy. And oftentimes, your audience personas and audience segment step is missing. And we want to make sure that we address that with the businesses we work with because it's so important in having an effective marketing strategy. Yeah. So this webinar is intended to kind of walk you through a little bit about um, how do you how do you build an audience persona if you're one of those businesses and you're like, I've never done this before. This feels a little foreign or overwhelming. We're going to walk you through how do you do this and then how do you apply it? Um, so that's kind of the purpose of today. As we go through the webinar, um, if you have questions, please make sure that you put those questions into the chat box. If we have time at the end, we want to try to pull up those and answer as many of those as we can. But we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So specifically, what we're going to cover is your understanding your audience segments, whether you're a small company, a nonprofit, no matter what industry you're in, you have multiple segments and it's important to understand what they are. We're going to look specifically at how to gather data for your personas. We're gonna go through each section and segment of a persona. We're going to talk to two real companies today, Shed Penny and Schmidt Security Pro. And then we're going to talk about how you use and apply your personas within your marketing strategy. So first, understanding your segments. Whether you are a business to business company or a business to consumer or a combination of both, you have multiple segments and you wanna be able to understand who they are and how you can solve their problems specifically. So here's a fictional example. It is a furniture store in central Ohio that currently sells to commercial clients, executive assistants, and operations directors. And then on the residential side, the furniture store sells to people with children that are 27 to 50, people without children in that same age range, and then residential, um, retired people. And so they all have different needs, different lines of furniture that they prefer, different products and even services as well as far as delivery and uh, getting everything installed properly. So it's important to understand who they are and how you can meet their needs effectively. Um, but we want to take it a step further. We want to understand not only these segments of people, but beyond what they need from your company, what are their interests? Uh, what are their, uh, what do they do in their free time? Who are their family members? So if we can really define who they are as people, uh, we can meet their needs better, educate them about their business and how we solve their problems. And perhaps you have an ideal customer that you're not already reaching. Uh, we can address that too. So maybe, you'd like to reach a younger audience that is 20 to 26, but you just haven't reached them yet, uh, we can create, work with you to create a persona so that you can educate them about your business and help them to consider a purchase. So how can you gather data to understand who your segments are? You have a general sense based on your you know, talking to customers um, and anecdotal evidence, uh, but we recommend gathering hard data. So Google Analytics is a great way to do that. So this is an example from our news property, Richland Source. So we recommend logging into your analytics and looking first at audience overview. It'll tell you the top 10 cities of people coming to your site, where are they located, what city, Next on the left menu, you can look at your demographics overview. You can see the age breakdown as well as gender breakdown. And moving down the left menu, you can look at your the interests of people coming to your site. And Google is a great marketing partner because it can tell you your affinity categories, 
that is the people that are coming to your site and what they're searching for. But this is what they are just starting to search for and educate themselves on. So on Rich and Source, it's lifestyles and hobbies, as well as food and dining are the top two. And then over on the right in market segments, that's when people are about ready to purchase for this certain category. Uh, this is what they're searching for, and this is how Google has categorized them. So you can gather a lot of data to understand your audience, who's coming to your site already, and how you can further meet their needs and educate them and solve their problems. The second way to gather data is to conduct a survey. Many companies conduct surveys throughout the year to do market research and product testing. Perhaps you have a new product that is launching or just to understand how satisfied your customers are and gather some comments from them. Whenever you do that, include demographic information. Ask age, gender, education, and income. Make it optional. We don't wanna be off-putting or offend anyone, but we just wanna understand who they are and how we can serve them. So this can be a really valuable tool to help you understand your audience. Okay, so now that we have um, kind of talked about different ways you can learn uh, about your audience that you already have through data, let's actually break down how to develop an audience persona. So one thing I want to talk about, though, before we go into the details is there is one thing I see businesses do over and over and over again when I sit down and we start talking about this is there's this temptation to make your persona super general. So a lot of times I hear, I'll ask the questions and we'll, we'll start diving into it. And um, they'll go, well, I mean, it's hard because, you know, we've got someone who's in their 50s and I've got someone who's in their 20s. And so it's, it's just really hard. Fight that temptation. So remember, you want to develop multiple personas. Um, I tell people, look at it like a bell curve. So you're always going to have your outlier people. And yes, we love those outliers. We're certainly never going to turn them away. But who lives in the bell? Who is your main uh, customer base? And maybe you have four or five, maybe even six different personas that live within that customer base. Um, try really, really, really hard to avoid the temptation of generalizing. The purpose of developing a persona is to actually basically create a person so that when you start doing your marketing and thinking through ads that you're going to run, content that you're going to create, um, different things like that, instead of picturing this amorphous kind of group, I guess, you can actually realize I'm talking to this person and help you with strategy is going to help you with content um, so as we go through this if you feel your urge of going broad generalizations smack yourself in the hand and tell yourself to stop we want to go specific here so um, there are four components the first one is going to be defining characteristics this is where we're going to actually think about the physical person. Um, so one way to look at that is picture that loyal customer that you have that you're like, if I could duplicate this person over and over and over again, my business would be amazing. Um, so we're going to look at um, who is that person physically. And then we're going to look at their interests and hobbies. And so this is going to be both in the physical sense, what do they do with their time, but also in the digital sense, where are they spending their time on their phone and on computers and things like that. Then we'll move into beliefs and aspirations, and we're gonna end with problems and objections. So those are the four components of developing your audience persona. So let's get started with defining characteristics. So some of the things you wanna um, picture here, and you know, we've got the kind of creepy looking bald man, woman uh, in the middle. The point of that is you're gonna fill in these details. You're gonna decide, is it a man? Is it a woman? Um, how old are they? Um, you know, so are they, are you trying to connect with a younger audience? You know, are you trying to connect with middle schoolers and teenagers and maybe their parents? Or are you trying to connect with an audience that is, um, you know, maybe older and they're retired, they're not working full time. And so, you know, that, that visual there is intended so that you can fill in the details. So how old is this person? Um, and give it a specific age. Again, don't give me an age range, give a specific age. Is it a male, is it a female? Did they graduate high school, maybe have some college, or maybe they have a PhD? What's their education level? 
are they married? Um, are they divorced, separated? You know, what, what is the marital status of this person? Do they have kids? Do they have multiple kids? Are their kids older? Are they younger? Um, maybe if you're targeting someone who is older, um, the question isn't necessarily just kids, but do they have grandkids? Um, that also matters. Are they working full time? Are they working part time? Are they retired? Are they a stay at home mom or stay at home parent? Um, what's their income? Are they bringing in fifty thousand a year? Are they bringing in five hundred thousand a year? And um, and then where are they located? You know, so if your business is one that just kind of serves your immediate geographical area. Um, that you know, that's going to be your location. Choose a place in in that area. But maybe you have products that you serve regionally or nationally or even globally. Um, so pick a location for this persona. And again, you're going to have multiples. So avoid that. This is the area that is the hardest to um, avoid that generalization because you're going to want to say, well, I mean, I have both men and women. Great. You're going to have a persona for each. Um, I have both. Uh, you know, I, I've got people who are working. I've got people who are retired. Fight that urge. Pick one singular person, because the more defined that you can have this person, the easier it will be to apply the persona later on when you're, we're talking about your marketing strategy and your content. So that's your defining characteristics. Now we're going to take this person. Always keep that person in your mind. So now as we look at the interests. We're going to look at how are they spending their free time? So do they go to the movies? Do they like to go shopping? Are they playing a sport? Do they enjoy reading? Um, are they, you know, are they spending time with their kids? What are they doing with their actual time? What are their hobbies? Sometimes your product or service that you offer is going to align directly with one of those things, which is awesome. You know, sometimes your product or service may not necessarily tie directly into how they spend their time and their, like their free time per se. But where this is important then is again, when we're looking at maybe what content you're gonna create in your marketing strategy, um, or where are you gonna place your content, when you know the types of things that your ideal customers are interested in, you can make sure that you're, you're marketing to them in a way that it doesn't always feel like you're selling to them, but they, they get this sense of like, wow, they know me, they understand what I enjoy doing, they connect with me. Um, and then we're gonna also look at where do they turn for news and information? Are they people who follow the news and local events? Um, or are they people who really don't care and they mostly are interested in things like pop culture? Um, if they do follow the news, where are they getting that from? Is it word of mouth? Is it social media, national news organizations, or maybe even local, like what we have through our news properties with Richland Source. Consider those things. What kind of media are they using? Um, do they use streaming services like Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime, um, YouTube? Are they listening uh, to the radio? Do they have Sirius XM? What kind of media are they consuming on a daily or weekly basis? And then this last one, this is really, really important because let's be honest, social media is everywhere. And yes, there are still people who are not on social media, but the vast majority are. And if you don't have a social media strategy, you really need to, to get one. And so think about this person that you developed in the defining characteristics. What platforms are they using? Are they on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn? I mean, there's so many different options. And you'll find, um, I was in a meeting just the other day with an 18 year old and we were talking about Facebook and she's interning at, at a business and she was like, yeah, I had, to, I had to learn how to use Facebook, which then made me feel really old because Facebook is my predominant social media platform. Um, you know, so if you're targeting that younger generation, you're looking at the high schoolers, maybe early 20s. Um, they may have Facebook accounts, but oftentimes we're seeing that generation using Instagram a lot more. Um, and then they're also the ones who are early adapters to things like TikTok and Snapchat. Um, if you're trying to target my generation, I'm, you know, I'm in my early 30s and Facebook is the platform that I use predominantly as well as Instagram. Um, if you're looking at someone who's older, um, Facebook is probably the, the one that is, if that they're on. Now, again, I'm talking in generalities. You may find that your person breaks these trends. And if that is the case, go with that. Don't necessarily believe that, oh, I've got to go with this specific thing because that is what, you know, what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, you want to think about what social media platforms are they using right now? 
Okay, so now we're going to move into aspirations and beliefs. These are things that are going to build off of one another. So we're going to start with values. These are one word statements. What does your person value? Do they value family, freedom, honesty, transparency, integrity, happiness? What are those one word statements that identify their core values? And then on top of that, we're going to move into beliefs. So beliefs are statements about like general truths um, that they believe about the world and society. So things like, I believe that if you work hard, you will succeed. I believe education is important. I believe that kids deserve to be kids. I believe that my family should come first. Um, what are the beliefs that your people have? After that, we're going to move into attitudes. So attitudes, another way to look at this are what are their preferences? So um, do they prefer the details or do they prefer broad stroke? Uh, you know, give, just don't don't get into the weeds with me. Just give me kind of the big picture. Um, do they prefer to buy things online or do they prefer to go into the store? Um, do they prefer hard copy versus digital? You know, so another way to look at it is what are their attitudes? What are their preferences towards things? And then ultimately, it's all going to capstone in behaviors. So these are the observable actions that we actually see people take. Um, this is what matters, especially to you as a business owner and marketers is, you know, we want to look at particularly what are their buying habits? Um, are they buying things online? Do they prefer to go in store? Um, you know, are they the type of person who... Uh, shops or are they window shoppers? Are they the type of person who um, signs up for extracurricular activities and courses? Are they the type of person who goes on vacations? Um, if they go on vacations, are they big extravagant vacations or are they more local vacations? Do they work late? What are those observable behaviors that you see from this person? Um, and then another thing to think about that's not on this slide, but it's their aspirations. So what are they aspiring to both personally and professionally? Um, you want to think through all of that. And, and again, I understand you may not know specifically. So you're making some assumptions in general. But um, again, this is where you want to look at both anecdotally your experience as you engage with your customers. But then also what Angie was talking about, you can use some data to, to get some more information on this, whether it's a survey or what you're seeing in your Google Analytics. Okay, so now we're going to go into this final component. It is our problems and objections section. Every business has started because you have a product or service that is going to solve someone's problem that you can make money off of. That's the reality. No one starts a business um, because they have something that no one wants. And even if they have something that they want, they can't make a profit off of it. That is the essence of businesses. I've got something that's going to make your life better and we're going to do an exchange of goods um, so that you stay profitable and that customer gets something that's going to help them uh, overcome an obstacle or, you know, be able to be happier, whatever that is. So you want to think through what are the problems that your customer is facing? This person, not your amorphous customer, this singular person. What is the problem that they are facing that your product or service is going to solve for them? So you may have a singular product, but the problem that that product serves may look a little bit different for each persona. So your product may, um, the problem that a 33-year-old mother of two uses your products for that problem that they need your products for may be different than the 60 year old uh, grandfather who's retired. And so this is why being specific is so important is because you want to make sure that you are communicating appropriately to each of those people in, in the ways that that are going to connect with them directly. And then the second part of that is the objection. So you're always going to face that friction of why people are hesitant to do business with you. The most common objection is going to be cost, expense. Um, but you also have, it takes too much time. Um, it feels too complicated. What, whatever those objections are, and you know them, you're, you're going to know why, why have you been losing business before? Why are people not buying from you? Um, and so think about those things. What are the objections that this specific person is going to have? And you want to think about that because then again, as you're doing marketing, you want to be able to help people visualize what their life's going to look like by using your product or service, how awesome it's going to be because you've helped them overcome this problem. And you want to make sure you communicate how simple it is to do business and get to the 
the other side where life is awesome. Um, you want to be able to help overcome those objections before they even have a chance to state them. Because if you can do that well, then they're, your, your ability to get them to go through the sales funnel is going to increase because you're removing barriers, you're removing friction, and you're helping them visualize what life will look like on the other side. Because ultimately, guys, remember that in the end, we all want to know how you're going to help me win and make my life better. That's, that's what people want. And ultimately, let's be honest, most of us are lazy. And so if you are making it sound complicated or are you know emphasizing how much it costs without positioning that as an investment versus a cost you know then i'm i'm less likely to transact with you so the simpler you can make it and um and ultimately you want to make your marketing about me so if you're going to make your marketing about me and of course me i mean like the the general sense um if you're going to do that, you need to know who the people are that you're trying to to make it about. So that's those are the four components of, of an audience persona. So we're going to actually take a moment. And like Angie said at the beginning, we have uh, two participants who have graciously volunteered to let us use their business. Um, and so we're going to start with uh, Juwan from Shed Penny. And we're going to go through those four components with Juwan. So right now, um, Angie's going to bring Juwan up on the screen so we can walk through these four components with her. And then um, after we've done that with Juwan, we're going to also bring up uh, Chris from Schmidt Security Pro so we can try to show you a little bit of what does it look like um, for, for a couple of real life businesses. You know, it's one thing to, to talk about businesses in a or personas rather in a general sense. Um, and sometimes it's a lot easier to, to actually look at it in practice. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, Juwan's coming up right now. There she is. Hi Juwan, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. All right, so I'm gonna let you walk, walk through this one. All right, hi Juwan. Hi. There is a little bit of an echo. So, <laughs> Sorry about that. So Ted Penny is actually our neighbor. She is a few doors down from us. So we're really glad about that. We spoke a few days ago. Joan, maybe you can join me briefly until uh, until you speak. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? So we just uh, muted your mic for a second uh, to see if that will help with the echo. So we'll unmute you when we're ready for you to answer some questions, if that's okay. So we spoke a few days ago and thought through Juwan's audience and who, what customers she wants more of. So we'll talk about that. I'm going to let Juwan introduce herself and talk a little bit about her business. My name is Juwan, and uh, my maiden name is Barn Dollar, and then we reduced the barn and the dollar down to a shed and a penny, and that's how we got our name for Shed Penny. Um, we will soon be in business one year here at our store location on July 5th, marks one year, um, here in the Carousel District. Um, you know, we're constantly evolving as far as... Um, who our audience is, and so my beginning might not be what it is now. So, what else great. would you like to know? Great. That's great. So, next we want to think about the defining characteristics of your ideal customer. So, we spoke about your ideal customer is uh, someone who wants custom. Orders. They want custom furniture restoration. Uh, so tell us about the defining characteristics of, of this ideal customer. Uh, the defining characteristics, I would say 40 uh, ish. Um, some, I mean, high school, technical uh, school type, married, uh, full time employment, uh, maybe two children, uh, someone in the Richland County area. Great. And tell us about, do you know the gender of this person? I'm going to go with a girl named Karen. Okay, excellent. 
How does Karen spend her free time? Uh, I would say uh, taking care of her, her kids, uh, but liking to do something different. Uh, she may like to watch flea market flip and see um, some flipping opportunities, uh, but family activities and in the community. And what social media outlets or general media outlets does she prefer? Uh, I, I would go with Facebook, uh, Instagram. Okay. Now let's think about Karen's goals. Uh, what does she want to accomplish personally and professionally? Uh, like her aspirations and, and beliefs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that she would... Um, be ready at the age of 40, but ready for a change um, as her family needs are different, change in her furnishings, um, but she wants something in her life that she's supporting her family. Uh, she values quality items so that it just doesn't break after the family uses something quickly. Um, she likes yeah, likes the quality pieces that are last longer. Um, and we like the Karen. Karen comes in here a lot because she supports her local mom and pop uh, businesses. Um, so she's a repeat customer. Great. And let's think about her problems, problems and objections. So what problems does Karen have? She could have a problem finding a quality piece. Um, no, let's see, uh, easy to work with, um, and with a customer, we're customizable for her, and it's local. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So you've thought about her problems and then how you can solve them. So she wants quality and you provide that, you take quality items and you repurpose them and restore them. And she wants something customized. You can take a look at exactly what she wants and tell her if you can make that happen, you and your team, and you're local and easy to work with. So you can arrange pickup and delivery as well. Now, what are other potential objections to working with you? website currently. Uh, that is our next goal for this going into our second year of business. Um, but I mean, our prices seem to be reasonable when the Karens of life come in. And um, there, some people don't have a pickup truck, so they can't pick up some of the larger pieces. So yeah, we do deliver. Okay, excellent. So you've thought about that. So you don't have a website, but you have a Facebook page that's very active. You have a lot of content there. So they can message you on Facebook or they can call and get a quote and even pay over the phone while you're developing your website in the next year. Uh, you've been told your prices are reasonable, so you can share some of those testimonials and then you can arrange the delivery. You're very easy to work with. Um, so that's excellent. Thanks so much. So now uh, the next step is to think about how you might use Karen in a marketing campaign. Um, and we'll get into that in the next section. Um, but thanks, John. Uh, when we were talking about this a few days ago, you know, how did the process go for you? We first thought about if you have any um, analytics to use and mostly we found out that we would rely on anecdotal data. Um, but tell us a little bit about the process of thinking through uh, Karen's persona. I, I just kind of thought about what, what customers I've seen come in here. Um, and then the people that follow our page. We have a little over 1,800 uh, followers on our Facebook page. Um, so I kind of watch them. I see their responses when I post something. Uh, I see how many people share. And somebody says they can't hear Jawan. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. We can uh, finish up. 
I don't know. Oh, now my back's on, <laughs> I think. So, but they, I can see people's responses on my Facebook page. I can see if they share it. I have a few people that share. I can see who shares it. I can notice um, who's liking them, who comes into the store after they've seen something, uh, the comments. So I watch that that uh, that information or that uh, conversation with Scuttlebutt on there. Well, thank you again so much for coming on the webinar and sharing about Karen. And uh, we appreciate that. Next, we're going to talk with Chris from Schmidt Security Pro. Chris is also a Mansfield business. We're going to go ahead and pull Chris up on screen. If you'll give us one second. Thank you again, Juwan. Um, we apologize. The audio is a little bit soft, um, but hopefully in the replay, you guys will be able to, to pick that up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch out and we're going to pull Chris up on screen. Give us one second here as we're navigating the uh, technical side of everything. And again, keep in mind, if you have questions as you are um, thinking through your own audience persona, um, make sure that you put those in the chat section so that we can um, you know, be able to answer those here at the end of, of our time together. So one second here. All right, do we have Chris up on screen? Sorry about this. Nope, oh, we're still missing Chris. Okay, we're gonna try this again. And do remember to post your questions in the chat. And the next thing is we are going to send out a worksheet with uh, that you can work through for your audience persona, as well as a webinar replay and our slides. All right, sorry about this. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty on our end. Give us one second here. Um, if we can't get Chris, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, we'll keep moving along, um, but let us try one more time. Chris, do you see the invites to join the screen? Well, Audrey, do you want to uh, walk us through Schmidt Security Pro's persona? Oops. Sure. Um, so sorry about that, that we couldn't get Chris on the screen, but um, you know, what we can do is kind of walk through a little bit of who their persona might be. So for those of you who don't know who Schmidt Security is, their name kind of gives away who they are. They are a security company, but they serve both commercial as well as residential, and they offer more than just security systems. You know, they're also offering things like uh, security guards. They offer fire services. Um, these are both product lines that uh, go within their commercial business, and then they have the security systems that serve large organizations. They have security systems that are going to solve, uh, serve small businesses that are, you know, maybe the size of a place like Shedpenny, um, a more local small business with uh, one location and a couple people coming in and out employee-wise, of course, not 
customer wise. We want lots of people coming into the Shed Penny. And then we also have the home residential side of things. So for Chris, when she is working through her personas, she wants to look at all of those verticals and make sure that she has personas for each and every one of those. Um, and so we're going to focus more on the residential person. And, um, you know, so within the residential vertical, we're looking at their, her ideal person is possibly, um, we're looking at a, a homeowner, you know, first and foremost, that's important location wise is they, they own their own home and they live, um, we're going to say for the purpose of this persona, they live here in Mansfield. And so, um, they are probably, I don't know, we'll say 30 years old. Um, and it is a wife who, um, you know, she's living at home with her husband. Maybe they have uh, their first child at home. And, oh, there's Chris. Yay, we got Chris. Can you hear us, Chris? Can you hear okay, Chris? I don't know if Chris realizes she's on screen yet. I can't hear again. Technology, you have to love it, right? Okay, um, well, as Chris is working on her her video, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep going through. Can you hear okay? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Chris is working on her, her video. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna keep going through. Can you hear okay? Yes. Okay. I think we have a bit can you of hear me? Yep, we can hear you okay, Chris. All right. So Chris, we're working through your defining characteristics right now. So um Go ahead and pick up where I left off with our person who lives in Mansfield. They are 30 years old. It's a wife married with one child at home. What other defining characteristics would you have for your persona here? Yep, we can hear you okay, Chris. That's from like a minute ago. All right, so Chris, oh. we're working through that was an interesting delay. All right. So it looks like we have quite the delay happening on this end. Um, I don't know if you guys are experiencing that on your end. So as much as I would love to hear from Chris directly, I think the technology is just not going to let us do that right now. So um, we're going to go ahead and move forward with the, the persona just so we can get back on track. Chris, I apologize for that. Um, but we'll, we'll keep, go ahead and keep moving forward. Um, can Real quick, just... Are you guys still being able to hear us okay? Um, can you can put that in the chat and let us know if you guys are having any further audio problems that would help us out on our end. Um, but while we're we're checking on that, I'm going to keep moving forward. So uh, defining characteristics. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, so she's 30. She's married. She has a kid at home. Um, she is working part time, um, maybe not uh, working full time while her kid is at school. She's going and doing some things um, and uh, not not necessarily full time mom at stay at home mom, but also not a full time uh, worker. And her, her kid is about uh, six years old. So just starting out in school as well. Um, so now we're going to move into the next section, which is the interest and hobbies. So she really enjoys being able to um, spend time with her family. That's something that's really big. Her All of her family's local and around this area. Um, and she enjoys going to the park with her kids. She does enjoy browsing. Um, on online shopping, she checks out Facebook Marketplace. Um, and so when we look at the types of media sources that she uses, she's definitely streaming Hulu a little bit during the day while the kids are, or her kid, not kids, is at school. Um, she is also looking, um, she follows Instagram and Facebook. She loves the Facebook Marketplace, likes to look for, for her. One of the things that's important to her is finding a deal. And so going to, um, you know, thrift shops and any opportunities to get uh, quality second use materials, that's something that interests her. 
Um, and, and she, like I said earlier, she's on Facebook, she's on Instagram. She doesn't really pay attention to Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, she maybe it might start exploring TikTok here soon because she's heard a little bit more about it. Um, and then we're going to move into the values, her aspirations and beliefs. So for her, her biggest thing is she wants to be a good wife and a good mother. And so one of the things that she values is going to be her family, first and foremost. And she believes that it is her responsibility to make sure that her child is well loved and cared for. She believes that family comes first in all that she does. And her attitude towards that is that she, you know, she wants to be able to, um, she wants to know the details. You know, her husband is the one who may be kind of looking at more of the broad strokes, but for her, details are important because she values her family so much that she wants to make sure everything is taken care of. Um, which is true for a lot of women in marriages is where, you know, oftentimes we are the detail oriented people that are then nudging and elbowing our husbands to take action. And so when we look at her behavior, um, she is the one who's online and doing a little bit of the initial research, but then she's asking her husband to be the one to reach out and get an appointment scheduled and um, get things going for when they think about a security system. And so her problem that we are trying to solve for her is, you know, they have a young kid at home, they live in Mansfield, and it's not that they feel unsafe at their house by any means, but there is this extra sense of security that she's been looking for just to make sure that everything is going to be taken care of. And that is, you know, if for some reason they were to be gone from home and maybe, um, you know, if, if for some reason a fire were to start, they want that peace of mind knowing that they would be alerted, that the fire department would be called automatically. Um, they want so really one of the things they're looking for the problem that she's trying to solve is peace of mind and her security but her objection is security systems have always seemed so expensive and so um, that is a big objection that she is having is it seems really 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 expensive and um, you know they're trying to watch their budget and so when Chris goes to start thinking about her marketing, she wants to think about how do we position a security system, not as an expense, but as an investment into that peace of mind. And it also gives Chris the opportunity to talk about ways that, um, that their system, they have different options within their system. That So when I'm advertising and marketing to be able to um, uh connect with this person that we've identified here. We want to think through what of those product lines are we going to offer to, to her? Whereas another persona, we might be offering more services that aren't just about security, but are also about home automation, because that's another thing that I know that Schmidt does. So, um, you know, I apologize. Obviously I don't work for Schmidt, so that probably is a little bit loose of, of a persona for them, but hopefully that gives you guys a bit of an idea. Now, one thing I do love that Juwan did when we we went through her persona she gave her persona a name so that's a great starting point give this person a name it'll help you visualize it um, so we are going to move forward we've got about 15 minutes left and we want to now look at how do you apply all of this so before we go into the specifics i want to just start with some basic marketing strategy overview and so, so you may have heard this as a funnel as a stream um, a customer value journey whatever you want to call it there is four basic steps in this process and these are broad strokes um, you can obviously divide these out even in more detail if you'd like but the first one is awareness you need people to know you need this persona that we've created to know that you exist and what you do marketing in this level is basically an exercise in memorization. We want them to know who we are and what we do, and you want to repeat that over and over and over to them in your marketing so that they, they know it by heart. And then we want people to engage with us. We want people to like it, like our posts, share, comment, come into the store, whatever engagement looks like for you in your business and service. And then we want them to ideally, obviously transact. We want them to purchase. But then this final stage is really, really important. It's the re-engage and return stage. So if you're a coffee shop, you want them to come back every day to get their coffee. If you're a roofing company, they may not return for another 20 years, but in that cycle, maybe they're referring you to 
other people that they know within their spheres of influence that are also looking for roofing services or home improvement services. So that re-engage return stage is still important regardless of whether your buying cycle is within a couple hours um, because there's a lot of coffee addicts in the world or your buying phase is longer because if you do a really good job, they shouldn't need your service for a long time. But when you are marketing to them, you want to continue to re-engage them for a referral purpose. So keep that in mind. It's important to keep these four stages in mind along with your persona as we go into how do I apply this in my marketing. So next, we're going to talk about content. Content is one of the main ways that you market. And so you want to be able to connect with your target audience by building content that's going to align with their aspirations and beliefs. So when we look at that four four part grid, the aspirations and beliefs and the problems and objections categories, those are going to help you figure out what type of content, what do I what do I talk about in my content? Um, and so you want to be able to connect with them beyond just the external physical need that you are helping them solve. Definitely talk about the problem. Certainly talk about that external problem. But here's the thing. People typically don't transact if you just talk about the external problem. Ultimately, I transact because with you particularly is because you are connecting with me at a deeper level. You're connecting with my values. You're connecting with my beliefs and my attitudes and my aspirations, all of those things. So that's why it's really important to kind of think through those things and then you can also be um, being able to position your product or service in a way that's helping overcome my objections so if we think back to the Schmidt example right so I have one of my objections is it feels really expensive we are on a tight budget is this something that I can afford and you have the opportunity to then position in your content about the peace of mind the value of investing in peace of mind and if I can frame it that way well now it doesn't feel like an expense that I have now it's an investment back into my family because one of my values is family comes first. Um, and I believe that it is my responsibility as the mother to do everything I can, I can to protect my family. Now, one of the other things you want to think about, though, is what is the format that your content's going to take? Is it going to be a blog article, a social post, a podcast, a lead generator, which side note on lead generators, that can be a PDF download on your website. It can be a giveaway. It can be a free quote of some kind. So lead generators can take form in multiple ways. Um, and so I've got some sample content ideas off to the side. And so when we consider the first two categories of defining characteristics and particularly the interest and hobbies section, that is especially important because that's going to help you understand what format should your content take. So if you are putting together a bunch of videos, but your persona is someone who's really busy and they really don't get on Facebook all that often or YouTube, whatever, wherever you're putting those videos, they're not there. Well, you're putting a ton of time and energy into creating a content asset that is geared towards this person and you're placing it in a, in a place that they aren't. So you, that's, that's a waste of time and a waste of your resources. So those first two categories of defining characteristics and what are the, where are they spending their time digitally and physically are there to help you think through the format of your content as well as the placement of your content. And so um, that's that's how you kind of use those four squares when, when looking at content is what is the format it should take, what is the placement I should put it, and what should it be about. Now, Make sure you keep in mind those four stages of the buying process that we talked about from awareness, engagement, purchase, and re-engagement, because when you look at your content, you know, if I'm trying to get someone to move from engagement to purchase, well, maybe a product demonstration video is something that makes sense for that. If I'm trying to um, just gain general awareness, I'm going to go all in on social posts and images. Um, you know, so you, you want to look at who it is you're talking to and where are they in that process. That's going to help you decide where you put your time and energy in form of content. And keep in mind, we're not saying you have to build all of these sample contents. You don't have to have them all. 
pick a few, um, start small, especially if you have a small marketing, you know, maybe you don't have a marketing person and, and you're a one-stop shop, you're running the whole thing. Well, you might want to start with uh, just picking social posts. I'm going to go all in on social posts and this is what I'm going to, I'm going to hit these four phases, um, but I'm not going to worry about a lead generator yet. I'm not going to worry about trying to do a product demonstration at this time. Um, if you have a marketing team, you probably will be able to do a little bit more of these. And then the other thing, you know, is, if you find yourself in a position where this still feels really overwhelming for you, that's where places like us with Source Brand Solutions, we can come alongside you and we can help create some of this content for you. So that's one way to be able to apply your audience persona. And next, Angie is going to dive into um, how, how do you apply personas when you're actually looking at direct ad campaigns? Yes, thanks, Audrey. So we highly recommend running digital ads be a digital first company and then think about other non-digital things beyond that that are still really relevant and helpful. So first, social media ads. So Facebook, we looked at examples, uh, Instagram, we mentioned TikTok, Snapchat. You're going to look at where your persona is spending time on social media and run ads there. You can do a variety of different things with your ads. You can run awareness about your company, those type of ads. You can try to reach an, that audience and inform them, engage them. You can drive traffic to your website. You can try to get them to go to your e-commerce store or call for a quote. And then you can um, try to get leads, mainly emails to sign up for your list. And then Google Ads are helpful too because you can reach people who are searching for exactly what you offer. You can do strategic keyword campaigns and go after niche audiences um, within your within those segments and drive traffic to your site. Uh, so let's look at an example here. So let's think about Juwan's example of Karen, who's 40, looking for custom furniture restoration. So we're going to uh, go to the Facebook ads manager and, and do a target audience there. We're going to say, get more leads. Uh, we kind of went through the purposes of these uh, types of campaigns. And then what's very important is the targeting. So it's going to default to 18 to 65 in the target here, but you want to make sure to do custom targeting. So for Juwan's example, it's Richland County. We're gonna put in 35 to 50, just because you know Karen's in that range. We don't wanna limit it too much when you're actually doing the targeting. You wanna do it a little bit broader uh, within that range. You're going to think about uh, gender. And then I put in one interest interior design. There's several others uh, that can further narrow that. And then it generated about 5,000 people in that audience. And then you can further set your budget and duration. Um, and again, this is, you can follow the prompts and dive into the best practices for Facebook. And there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, Source Brand Solutions can help advise you on Facebook and social media campaigns as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to move into the Q&A. So I see a question here from Marty. The question is, what percent of a business profits do you think should be reinvested into advertising? That's a great question. And we usually talk about that with our clients in some of the first meetings when we're understanding where they want to go, what they want to accomplish. So we actually recommend looking at overall revenue and taking about 10% of that and investing it into advertising um, and thinking about your overall strategy, all of your personas and targets and, uh, and investing it that way and separating it out. You can then take an annual budget and then separate it into, okay, how much am I going to spend on each target and on each type of campaign on each platform? But that's a good general rule. Small businesses and startups that are just ramping up sometimes do 5%, uh, but do as much as you can up to 10% and then think strategically about if you are in a growth phase and you want to acquire new customers quickly, you can do 12 or 15% um, and even more, or you know, you really want to think about your, your short and long-term goals and how 
that strategy lines up. One thing I want to emphasize on that, I like that how Marty phrased that question, what percent of a business's profits do you reinvest back in? Um, a percentage is a really good starting point. Sometimes I sit down with businesses and they set it as an exact number. And so what ends up happening when you do that is let's say your business experiences great growth, but then you've plateaued and you're like, why, why am I plateauing? I don't understand. Well, as your business grew, your marketing budget needs to grow with it because you want to continue to reach more people and there's more things that you should be doing to continue that growth. If you use a percentage as your marketing grows, your marketing budget will grow with it. Or God forbid we hit, you know, a global pandemic and things look a little bit different. And maybe you you took a hit. If you have a percentage um, that allows you to be able to scale your expenses, your marketing expenses and everything like that based off of where you are. And that's something you want to be evaluating at least annually. Some people will evaluate it quarterly or semi-annually, whatever that makes most sense for you. Um, but do a percentage. And like Angie said, 10% is kind of a good starting point. If you've never done this before, look at what would 10% be and then ask yourself, can't, can we do that? Um, some businesses, they, they can't do 10% because they're, like Angie said, a small business or a startup. And so they need to start scaling back. And so start just playing with the numbers and figuring out what is that percentage for your business. Start at 10% and you can go lower or you can go higher based off of what your needs are, both internally and then what your objectives are to reach your audience as well. So that's a great question. Um, Juwan, we saw you also asked, will we be sending out the PowerPoint sheets in an email? Yes, we will. That's going to be sent out here at the end. We're going to also send you the replay of this. So if you want to go back and listen to it again, you can do so. And then we do have a worksheet that we're going to send you with those four components, the defining characteristics, interests and hobbies, um, the beliefs and aspirations and problems and objections. You can then fill that out and use that worksheet to kind of help you think through your own personas. And then on the back of that worksheet, we have some questions to get you to think about um, what type of content would make sense, what type of ads are going to make sense for that specific persona. So we hope that that's a great resource for you as you are brainstorming how to market and um, connect, not just with general people. We don't want to cast a wide net. Um, you want to look at how do I connect with the right people that are going to grow my business. Um, I think those were all the questions that we saw in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, our contact information is there on the screen. So please reach out to us at sourcebrandsolutions.com. You can also reach us um, by the email there and phone number. We would love to continue this conversation with you if you are interested. And, uh, you know, we, we thank you guys for, for joining us today. There's one bonus resource to you. We have a Google Analytics primer because we think it's so valuable. We're going to send that out your way as well. That'll be coming to you later today. Um, and then if you think about how often you should reevaluate your personas, we would say annually or at least quarterly. We highly recommend quarterly content and ad strategies. Um, so you can think about your personas in quarters and then annually um, and see how your content is performing, your ads are performing, and then adjust from there. We always recommend reporting, adjusting, and modifying. So again, thank you for joining us today, and we appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye.